Welcome to Bridging the Divide Summit. I've been asked by Celia and Faye to record this short video answering the question of the day. If you could share one piece of advice on how to help your clients manage their emotions in a diversive world, what would it be? Well, that's simple in my case. It has to be, let the numbers decide. Hello, my name is Colin Miles. I'm the CEO here at Miles Better, and I'm also known as the Numbers Guy. I help entrepreneurs reveal their numbers through business mentoring so that they can make powerful decisions as we develop solutions for their tax and accounting in real time. And this allows you, the clients, to focus on your passion of working with your, with your own clients and creating wealth for your family and your business. So why do I believe my opening statement? Well, numbers are the alpha and the omega of everything and as a result, resonate through the, both the practical and the emotional side of any What business. we bring to the table is clarity and remove the emotion if, that, if they're truly understood. I also believe that accounting is the language of business, and unfortunately most entrepreneurs are not fluent. And so if you ask the uh, most business owners about their numbers, the emotions run high, particularly in the current rapidly changing world, as it is often looked at as a black hole rather than an open book. What I truly feel is that working with a business mentor allows you to remove this black hole view and start to see numbers as your friends. Once you trust the numbers, then you can allow you to make some really powerful decisions and move your business forward without the emotional baggage that sometimes goes alongside it. Now, not all decisions can be purely made from the head as the heart is key, but letting the numbers decide allows the emotional element to be a factor only and not the overriding consideration. So many entrepreneurs, unfortunately, will bury their head in the sand when it comes to numbers. Mm -hmm. poll, when, our, when business people ask about their biggest fear, the number one fear that came up was the public failure of your business. And interestingly, the second was the fear of death. So I read into that that most entrepreneurs would rather die than admit failure in a business, which is not a great mindset. So emotions often can run very high in business, and yet entrepreneurs leave them um, leave their emotions, leave their fears uh, behind, uh, um, buried, so that they end up, they continue to fester and eventually will cause an emotional breakdown. And we've seen that in friends and family, uh, I'm sure. We're all so conditioned these days that only success can be talked about in open conversation. And this mindset's not going to get any easier as time goes on, but it is only a cause for failure and the spiral of doom that we need to break. In business, there were good times and event and in excuse me, and unfortunately there are also bad times as some of us are experiencing at the moment. And this can truly play havoc on your emotions if you let them. So I believe that having a business mentor in your corner allows you to share this roller coaster ride of business. The old quote, a problem shared is a problem halved, and this has never been truer now than, uh, now than ever before. I recently worked with a couple of clients who went through my Let the Numbers Decide program. Um, as they had ignored the issues and allowed their emotions of public failure to keep them from revealing to even their family that they were on the point of going bankrupt. Almost taking death in some cases as an opinion, which we discovered, which was really quite worrying, rather than telling the loved ones of the, in, of the issues. I'm pleased to say that because they went through my program and worked with me, that they were actually able to overcome their issues by listening carefully to their, um, listening carefully and starting to understand what their issues were using plain speak language to show them what they needed to do and how together we could bring the action to life, the action plan, I mean, to life and include the whole family in the solution, which is key when you're working with your emotions because they come from the family um, and that's ultimately why we work. Using the numbers and not the emotions to find the solutions, we let the numbers decide the plan to success. you hear there's a theme here. Uh, the moral of the above example was that with the polarisation, unfortunately, of politics, opinions and the ever-changing business map, to try and do things on your own to the, in the current world is going to be really difficult and cause people to fail. So I work myself with a couple of mentors currently who are allowing me to explore new areas of my business and into, in a safe environment to explore ideas and concepts, knowing that I'm building a solid frame of success. The idea of working with a business mentor is that we are here not to criticise about the issue, but instead to focus on the problem with you, to guide you, to tease out of you a solution and then help develop a working solution. This divisive word, world, a word that has been banded around a bit more recently is the need for business and entrepreneurs to have empathy. 
Empathy sounds good, but how are we going to define it in the current changing world? Well, let's explore this word a little bit more. Well, the word didn't even feature in the Oxford uh, English Dictionary until just a short time ago, but it's gone on to mean so much to so many, I think, without many people truly understanding what they really want or what it really means to people. We've all been receiving numerous emails from brands as they state, we understand. But I reply, are your actions truly matching these words? And it's important for all entrepreneurs to have the same thing. This is where a business mentor can help as they look to challenge the status quo in your views and help let the numbers decide from my point of view so that the polarisation and the emotions of the current state of the world can be removed. In the past, businesses might have been praised for raising these issues, Black Lives Matter, um, poverty in the third world, etc. But set against the backdrop of the uncertainty about the future of business, people are taking notice of how businesses manage their messages against their actions. What is becoming clear is that the risk of businesses simply talking about empathy without translating these words into actionable, measurable, tangible outcomes can result in a huge hit to their numbers as people vote with their wallet and business and go elsewhere. In a recent poll, 91% of CEOs who were asked believe that their business was progressing, was giving out sorry, an empathic message. But when the same uh, employees of that business were asked, only 68% agreed. So it's clear that a plan is needed, both a communication plan, but more importantly, from my perspective, as the numbers guy, a numbers plan. And this comes full circle, as I said, back to the numbers as they are the alpha and the omega of everything. If the business financial goals don't match those of the desired outcome to change, then there will be a divergence. An effective and a thoughtful business owner leader will remind themselves that people are people and that people react based on their opinions and emotions when it comes to making a business decision or whether they should buy, whether they should work with you. People don't actually buy what you sell, they buy what you stand for. But if we can get them to think around perhaps the numbers of your business and the value of what that brings to your business, uh, then the emotional fades away somewhat. Trust, thus to gain trust, we must always be mindful that in our own ideas and beliefs may be fixed, but if we want to share them passionately and that the business numbers talk for the greater good of everyone, then our passion approach seems to gain some understanding and trust from our customer. Another thing I believe here um, at Miles Better is that as a business mentor can bring to the equation the concept of active listening. This was developed by Carl Rogers and Richard Farson back in 1957. So it's been around a long time, but has never been more relevant in today's changing world as we as business entrepreneurs need to listen to what our customers want to say, listen to how the customers are reacting and how those get affected in the numbers, because that removes the emotion uh, from our business and the worry if we know where we're going. So as we battle with business and the rapidly changing views that, hit, that can hit an entrepreneur hard, I say, let the numbers decide. Entrepreneurs' emotions can take over as they feel embattled with the changing world, but a business mentor program can help on so many levels. I've been working recently again with several entrepreneurs who've been looking to relaunch their business after the COVID-19 pandemic, and together we've been able to remove the emotion and allow the numbers to truly decide. An example has been a decision for one of my clients as to whether to stay with the bricks and mortar retail selling or move more online. Here comes the emotional battle that they went through in this decision. The client had been approached by a large retail chain before, just before COVID hit, and they were offering a very large contract, but there were some conditions. The offer would have generated a huge spike in revenue, but the question really became to the entrepreneur, at what cost to the overall business? There's a mantra that I live by here at Miles Better. Uh, sales of vanity, profit is sanity, but cash is king. Now, the emotional pull that was happening to this uh, entrepreneur um, was that to be able to say at a dinner party after the contract had been signed that they had just landed a million dollar contract would have been very tempting. The emotions are running high. You've got a lot of adrenaline. You're super excited and therefore extremely tempting. But with everything in, in, in the life, there was a but to this contract. The selling price that the retailer wanted to market this product at was far lower than the existing product was selling for. And then it became an issue of the emotion of how am I going to damage my, am I going to damage my brand? How will the per consumer who's already purchased perceive this shift? And so the emotion started to take place and the roller coaster pendulum swung the other way from being elated 
to being doom and gloom. Together we reviewed the long-term goals and decided that the best course of action was actually to decline the offer and not allow our emotions to take over. But instead we focused on developing the brand at the higher price point. We decided this through various numerous active listening sessions with the staff in the business and getting the entrepreneur to actually think about what was the true value of the business to them, uh, as well as being obviously emotional, but letting the numbers decide. But coupled with the ability of the entrepreneur to have a non-emotional outside resource in the form of me, a business mentor, was actually huge because we kept it clear, we kept it concise and we developed a plan. With the recent events um, and with COVID and the huge explosion online in sales, we actually had a little bit obviously of a bonus because it was the right decision as the business has grown exponentially. But ultimately the concept or the thought process was we let the long-term numbers decide rather than the emotion of being able to say at a dinner party, wow, I've just landed a million dollar contract. I hope this brings some clarity to why I believe letting the numbers do the talking really helps remove the emotion from the day-to-day -day function of running a business. I hope you will visit On Point Mentors and discover the various programs and support available from this amazing group of people. If you have any questions, then please feel free to reach out using the various options on my profile page today. Enjoy the summit and thank you for listening. My name is Colin Miles, aka The Numbers Guy.